Session 12, Kubernetes Services. This is more important about the communication. What you did in Lab 5 was just a small part of it. What are possible ways for communication among pods? Types of services in K8s, cluster IP, node port, load balancer. There are more, but our focus will be uh, on these. So let's understand deployment and services. What is the relationship? These two are unrelated, isolated component with each with distinct responsibilities. Deployment is responsible for keeping a set of pods running. That's what we have learned. A service is responsible for enabling network access to a set of pods. Network request to a service. Service will forward network request to a pod matching the selector. Like select pod where label is equal to ABC. This is how you specify. I think this is a very good understanding, good way of understanding that how they work. Alright. Because label selector play a very vital role in this. So we could avoid using service by enabling network access to each pod manually. But will that be ideal situation? I think no. However, when pods are created and destroyed, we will have to re-enable networking for each of them. That's not ideal situation. So better we create an independent, isolated infrastructure or resource. Then we attach it to the pod so that that is available whenever the pod is active by means of that label selector. That makes a lot of sense. So services let you define network uh, networking rules for pods based on their labels. Whenever a pod with matching label appears in the Kubernetes cluster, important is you have to always keep remember what is the service label, what matching label you created because the join kind of command, the way we use join in databases have to have matching columns. So, when a pod with a matching label appears in the Kubernetes cluster, the service will detect it and start using it to handle network request made to the service. A service type determines how the service is exposed, whether it is only accessible within the cluster, accessible through a static port on each node or using a load balancer from a cloud service provider. We decide. So client and the pods, how we connect. That is depending on our requirement. And trust me guys, that's the reason I requested you to provision it on uh, OCI. Because OCI will give you at least cluster IP, which was not possible locally. Cluster IP, individual node IP and load balancer also, though load balancer implementation is not there in the lab assignment. But at least two are there. Well, we'll manually create a few pods and then enable external network access to them via a service. So, client send the request to service, service handles it, IP is reliable, uh, IP deniable, uh, and this DNS and port. In fact, uh, I'll try to create a lab, I'm working on it though, uh, to access a pod through a domain name, that is DNS server, using a domain. I'm trying to register a domain and then uh, try to dress up the job uh, on OCI cloud so that I can access any website or host a website inside a pod and access it through the domain name that is DNS. That's also a possibility. Uh, that part is discussed in detail tomorrow. Theoretical part will be covered. Practical I uh, not confirmed yet. And that is networking part. Each pod's container will simply output the pod's host name when a request is made to port number 3000. No, this is this depend on what we have set up. This will uh, let us see which pod our services are routed the network request to. With a service in front of a set of pods, the pods can scale up and down, they can fail and they can be updated. As these events occur, service in front of them 
observe the changes and update its knowledge base of the pods. But if it never changes the stable IP address, DNS and port that it exposes. Think of service as having a static front end and a dynamic back end. The front end consists of IP, DNS name and port and that never changes. The back end consists of the pods which are fluid and can constantly be changing. Creating service, a quick setup. Let's create a service that will forward network request to our host name pods. So vi service.yml kind is service self explanatory comment uh, placed here itself. We are creating a service version metadata host name service specification expose the service on a static port on each node type is node port. So apply this kubectl apply service.yml now we'll create two pods that the service will use to handle network traffic and the selector is remember the selector is eco host name. So we have to have the same selector and here it is uh, exposing the node port 30163. This is where the service will be available on every node on this port number. Pay particular attention to the relationship between the service selector field as I have highlighted and the pods label. That's how service discovers the pod it can use. Create a manifest file to deploy two pods. This is my manifest file which is going to use the service which I created in previous manifest file. Containers, nginx host name and this is my metadata. Containers, name, image, ports. This is another pod, metadata, host name pod. This is what the label selector is. App is eco host name, the same. And this is matching. That's why uh, the service will be working on this. The service will be forwarding to this particular pod. Create two pods with this kubectl apply hyphen f svc deploy. You deploy it and these two pods will be created as the name suggests 0101 and 102. Two pods are created. Get all. You will see the details of what you have created. Access the pod by using any node name or the IP address and port specified in the output. That's what we have done. You have done similar, similar implementation in your lab 5 when you are configuring the OCI, the last part, the Nginx part. Kubernetes implements service discovery in a couple of ways. First is DNS, which is preferred mechanism. Second is environment variable, definitely not preferred because that will bind, that will make it static. We never want, a, and this, want this. DNS based service discovery require a DNS cluster add-on. We implemented that using CNI, flannel in our case. It implement pod based DNS service in cluster and configure all kubelets, uh, that is node, to use it for the DNS. The DNS add-on constantly watches the API server for new services and automatically register them in the DNS. This means every service gets a DNS name that is resolvable across the entire cluster. Through environment variables, every pod I get a set of environment variables that resolve every service currently on the cluster. However, it is a fallback in case you are not using DNS in your cluster. Services and endpoint objects as pod comes and go. The service dynamically updates its, its list of healthy matching pods. It does this through a combination of label selectors and a constant construct called endpoint object. Each service that is created automatically gets an associated endpoint object. All this endpoint object is, is a dynamic list of all the healthy pods on the cluster that match the service label selector. How it works? Kubernetes is constantly, constantly evaluating the service label selector against the current list of current healthy pods on the cluster. Any new pod that matches the selector gets added to the endpoint object and any pod that disappears get removed. This means endpoint is always up to date. 
then when a service is sending traffic to pods it queries the endpoint object for the latest list of healthy matching pods the endpoint object has its own api endpoint that kubernetes native apps uh, can query for the latest list of matching pods and these apps can send traffic directly to the pods now non native kubernetes app that cannot query the endpoint object send traffic to the service stable ip that is virtual ip this figure shows how it works this figure shows the node port service where a three pods are exposed externally on port number 3050 see here external client port number 3050 on all the nodes that is that's why we call it as node port node port so endpoint pod ip pod 2 ip pod 3 ip means all the ips are uh, rps uh, ips ips are mentioned in this let's go step by step let's not get confused we'll go step by step step number 1 is here step number 1 an external client hits node 2 on port number 3050 it is redirected to the service object step number 2 this is redirected to the service object this is service object then third step it shows that service has an associated endpoint object with an always up to date list of pods matching the label selector and then step number 4 shows the client being directed to pod 1 on node 1 the service could just and easily have directed the client to pod 3 or uh, pod 2 or pod 3 wherever in fact future request may go to other pods as the service perform basic load balancing hence think of this scenario as a load balancer if you are running five different pods or 10 different pod spread across different nodes and you are running same data same application on five pods on five different uh, nodes they are spread across so this makes you uh, understand the concept of load balancing because request co can go anywhere can go to node 1 can go to node 2 can go to node 3 as far as the pod level sectors are same because request will be redirected to any pod based on the label selector if that matches request will go to that and that is why in the future request may go to any other pod as well so therefore the service you can say it is performing the basic load balancing as well the cluster ip node port and load balancer what is the difference between the three what is the use case of the three the type property in the service manifest specification determines how the service is exposed to the network it changes where a service is able to be accessed from the possible types are cluster ip node port and load balancer cluster ip is the default value if not specified the service is only accessible from within the kubernetes cluster you can't make request to your pod from outside the cluster hence if you don't specify this you may not be able to access your pods from outside the cluster node port this makes the service accessible on a static port on each node in the cluster this means that a service can handle requests that originate from outside the cluster load balancer the service becomes accessible externally through a cloud provider's load balancer like oci has its own aws has its own gcp google cloud aws azure open stack oci they offer these functionality the cloud providers will create a load balancer which then automatically routes request to your kubernetes service shows the same application with the service added to into the mix the service is associated with the pod in front of them a stable ip dns and port it also load balance request across the pods that is load balancer kubernetes service node port example same example recreated 
this example why i will create a service that is available external network request we have specified the node port a value so that the service is allocated to that pod on each node in the cluster service host name service type is node port that's what the highlight point is make the service available to the external request from external clients then echo host name that's what we created that was the file forward request to pod uh, to the pods within uh, with the label of this value then uh, port node port port and target port access service on this external port number port exposed internally inside the cluster and target port port that containers are listening on see the port forwarding happening at three levels container pod and outside so where the container is running on port number 80 containers ports are 80 pods ports are 8080 service is exposed on port number 8080 cluster is exposing it on port number 30163 these are the this is how the request goes inside the cluster and that's how the request reaches to the desired container labels and loose coupling the selector part i want to highlight emphasize on this selector part the query part how it works pods and services are loosely coupled via labels and label selectors this is same technology that loosely couples deployments to pods and is the key to the flexibility provided by kubernetes in this figure three pods are labeled as zone is equal to production version is equal to 1 see here zone production version 1 zone production version 1 zone production version 1 and the service has a label selector that matches zone production version 1 the service is providing stable networking to all three pods you can send request to the service and it will proxy them to the pods this also provides simple load balancing example that's what we understood with the diagram this becomes more clear for a service to match a set of pods therefore send a traffic to them it is label selector only needs to match some of the labels on a pod however for a pod to match a service it must have all the labels the service is looking for yes that is true like service is looking for zone is production version is 1 so here we have zone is production zone is production zone is production so therefore this will not match this will not work in this figure the service does not match any of the pods it will not work this is because service is looking for two labels for pods that have two labels but the pods only have one of them so therefore it is actually you think of it as logical and in this figure service is looking for two labels zone production version 1 but pods have more but have these two also that is the point have these two also therefore it will work that's all for this session thank you very much